Hello. Today I'm going to take you on a journey of upgrading this beautiful computer from an 8700K to an AMD Ryzen R9 3950X 16 core 32 thread monstrosity. Show me Bob's. Show me Bob's and keys. This is bobkeys.com. We are working with them to bring you an additional 25% off on products like Windows 10 Pro. Use coupon code TS25 and you're gonna save 25% off the already good price of 1808, bringing it down by another four and a half dollars. You can save money on Windows 10 Home and also 25% off as well with Office 2019. Now, once you get your key, it'll appear in your account. Just copy that, hit start and type activation and activation settings will come up. Click on change product key and then paste your product key here. Or if it's that's not there, it may just say add product key or update product key if you have not already activated. Just paste it in there and then you will fully be able to use Windows 10. Thanks to bobkeys.com. And now to our regularly scheduled program. I got fed up. I got fed up with six cores. Decided I'm sick of it. I don't have to put up with it. I can put a 3950X into this tiny case and nobody can stop me. So I decided to upgrade the streaming PC because I'm not just streaming gameplay. An 8700K we would be pretty good for that. Just totally fine. Especially since we have this lovely EVGA GeForce RTX 2070 in here. This thick. Look at that thing. That thing is thick. It's beautiful. It's fast. Um, and it was also a good price. So you know, no, nothing is sponsored in this video, by the way. This is a lot of this stuff is like stolen from other computers and stuff, put it together. Uh, but I have one hell of a beast of a computer here, and that's because I'm mostly working in the Unreal Engine, working on some game projects, learning, doing whatever I can, and streaming at the same time. And I'm not a simple streamer. I like a lot of stuff. I like a lot of scenes in Open Broadcaster. And, uh, you know, I like to have 50 other pieces of software running at the same time, taxing GPUs, taxing CPUs. So I needed to go crazy and I needed 64 gigabytes of RAM on top of all of that. So let's go through what I've put into this system, starting with the case, which is just the same case that I was using before. It's the Corsair Crystal uh, 460X. And this is a very small case that I cannot believe can house a full-size ATX motherboard. In fact, I would not put a full-size ATX motherboard in here unless you really enjoy cursing. Like if you want to curse a lot and you want to hate yourself and you want to look in the mirror two or three times throughout the day when you get stuck and go upstairs and and drink alcohol and stare at yourself and go, why the hell am I doing this? Then this is a great idea. Gr grab an ATX motherboard and put it in here. Great. I'm happy for you. But for most of you, I would say, don't do it. Don't you don't you can do it. Now, it's really snug in here because I have a lot of fans. So in order to put the, you know, the motherboard in here, I had to put that in before all the fans and stuff. So let's get on over to that. The motherboard is the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming X that I've used a couple times before because it's really performant, even though the South Bridge gets a little warm, uh, a little warmer than some of the other options I have. But I haven't had any problems with this motherboard whatsoever. Plus, it has a lot of features, even more features than the uh, Asus Hero motherboard, which I wanted to keep on my test bench. I almost went for that one for this build, but that one has, um, I guess, heat sinks on the bottom that have individual covers for the different M.2 slots, and it only has two M.2 slots. But the individual covers made it easier uh, to swap out M.2 for testing and stuff, so that one's staying on the test bench. It's also been rock solid, uh, and I ended up going with this one. And one thing I like about this one in comparison to a lot of the other X570 uh, motherboards on the market is you have three M.2 slots. If you use all three of them, you're going to lose out on the last PCI Express 16 slot on the bottom, but that's no problem. I'm not going to, I'm going to use more M.2 and less of that as you'll see in this build. So again, the other option, if you don't need that many M.2, um, for a lower price, the Asus ROG X570 has been a really good motherboard for me. So I would recommend that one as well. Plus there's also the, B, the B550 stuff that a lot of people like. Here's that EVGA RTX 2070, and really you can just grab whichever version is like on sale. Some of the ones like the uh, you know overclocked versions, like the Super and stuff, uh, they will be slightly you know tuned a little better. And a lot of times that silicon has been tested for higher overall performance. So just pick the one that you think uh, will be best for you. But really, if you're doing 1440p gaming, you're going to be really happy with any of these cards, even 4K gaming with a lot of different uh, games out there. Now let's talk about memory. 
I need a lot of memory, especially for Unreal Engine and a lot of the other creative stuff. So I decided it was time to move from 32 to 64 gigabytes of Patriot Viper memory. My other computer had 32 gigabytes of Patriot Viper memory at 3200 megahertz. This one now has 64 gigabytes at 3600 megahertz. And I want to mention one thing because I, I had no problems getting this to work on this motherboard and I also tested it on the Asus ROG motherboard and it worked totally fine. And I looked at some of these um, reviews and they're like, oh, nope, doesn't work, nope. It will not hit, you know, 3600 megahertz. It only hits 3066 or whatever. Um, and that is what will happen if you install the RAM like most rational people, most people who've built computers before, if you install it in slot one and in slot three, that is what is going to happen. With a lot of the Ryzen stuff, or most of it, you install it in slot two and four. And that is where you get your power. So we had to bump up the power to 1.35 volts on this, and it runs perfectly at 3600 megahertz without any issues whatsoever. So yeah, you can see saying I've, I tried it with my i7 7700K, this person here, um, and they're talking, you know, a lot of the stuff that just sounds to me like they're running it in the wrong slots. I'm not 100% sure, but um, that's probably what happened with those couple of reviews. But I, this RAM is rock solid. So don't list people who didn't install it in the correct slots. You heard it from me. All right, now let's get down to storage because that's the big deal for this machine. Um, in addition to, you know, having super fast components everywhere else storage is extremely important uh, for unreal engine because a lot of the textures especially in future versions of unreal engine are just going to be streaming straight from your storage devices so i wanted to go with fast storage and a lot of it so for my operating system i went all out with the with one terabyte of severance nvme4 rocket it's their rocket whatever i forget what it's called rocket nvme 4.0 that's what it's called so I went with that one because it's a really good price to performance ratio and it also has some really nice uh, features when it comes to durability and stuff. Five year warranty and all that too. You could watch our video on how to move your OS from your old drive to the new one using a Kronos coming up very soon. Uh, when I you know, moved the OS from the old drive over onto this one. Made a video on that using a Kronos because it's very easy and it's free when you buy one of the separate products. You can just get their OEM version. All right, for my main work drive, um, I didn't go as crazy with the speed. We're doing Gen 3 by 4, but we're still talking 3,500 megabytes per second as opposed to 5,000 on the read with the other one. And um, the drive that I'm going for is this huge and expensive, but worth it, 4 terabyte NVMe drive from Sabrent. It's the Sabrent Rocket Q, 4 terabyte NVMe. Yep, yep, yep. So that's what's going in there. And uh, well, it says 3,200 on the right, and uh, 3,000 on the read and write. So yeah, it's up there really freaking fast but that is where the project and a lot of uh, that kind of stuff is going to go a lot of the creative stuff is going to go on that drive for just like regular games i know it's kind of weird because i wasn't going to do this but uh, i had a few of these laying around so i grabbed one of the four terabyte death star nas drives i've got like a few of them in a stack from when i took a nas apart they're still rock solid drives put that in there and a lot of the games go on that now I like to, I don't know why, maybe it's mental. I like to keep some of my games on a separate drive just to have like this be the gaming drive. And when I really need speed, I want them on an M.2 NVMe drive. So I've got the Toshiba OCZ RD400. It's fast, but it's not as crazy fast as some of the drives out there. We're talking 2600 on the read and 1600 on the write, but it's that's plenty. And I've got the uh, 512 gigabyte version in here. That's mainly just going to be for Skyrim, Nerim, Enderal, and mods. Um, because when you get a lot of mods in there and you start loading up games, it chugs a little bit. And a lot of the newer games that take a little while to load, it really only affects the loading speed. It doesn't you know, affect actual gameplay. So I'll throw them on there while I'm playing them. And then once I'm done, I'll delete them or move them to a different drive. Speaking of gaming, I want to experience, and you know, like old gaming, I want to experience games in their most pure form. So when I'm playing games like Thief and Oblivion and games that take advantage of, uh, of EAX, I want the actual hardware. And that's why I've grabbed one of the Creative Labs PCI Express version, Sound Blaster X-Fi Titanium. So right, that's right there, the little Sound Blaster. It's dusty and all that stuff, but whatever, it, it works. It'll get the job done. It's not really screwed in there very well, but it works and it will get the job done and it's gonna make, I mean, if you're doing headphones through this, you may have to deal with some output impedance and that sort of thing. You probably want to do with, you know, deal with an amp and run it through USB just for your headphones. But when it comes to having EAX and not having to worry about 
open AL and all that nonsense, doing it pure, that's the way to go. Now the cooling unit on here is a little bit too big for this space. I've got it crammed in here. I mean, it fits, but not the way I have it configured. So I wanted to put some of the LL fans in front. As you can see, we've got those RGB LL fans in the front. We've got three of those, 120 and two of them on top and one more in the back. So we have two kits of the RGB LL fans that have the nice ring light around them and everything. It's all fancy. I know you noticed a couple of the fans weren't working at the time of shooting the video, and that's because this had not come in yet. This is a four port hub from Deepcool. It also makes me feel good that there's something from Deepcool in my system because I really like this company. But this is just a simple four port hub. You plug it up to one of your fan headers, and then it gives you four additional fans. And the first one is going to be PWM, so it's discoverable in the UEFI or the BIOS or your fan software. I plugged it up to one of the uh, CPU fan headers because these fans are in front of the radiator, and I wanted it to be controlled through the CPU fan header. And while I was at it, I went ahead and installed a few more uh, internal USB ports. I just threw a little hub in there so that everything can be hooked up. And I have a push-pull configuration going with the LL fans in the front blowing through the radiator. And then I have the fans that came with it on the back pulling. And my Ryzen 3950X is idling about 41. So that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. But yeah, this is a very large cooling unit. In order to get it all to fit in there the way I wanted, I had to like move some of the bottom shroud forward. It's kind of just floppy, just hanging out right there. But I don't care. Works. What do you, you can't stop me. I'll do whatever I want. And as far as the power goes, we have the Corsair HX1000 on the bottom right here. And that's going to provide plenty of power for that CPU. And if I wanted to add more stuff like another GPU or something down the road, I'm not going to. But if I wanted to, I could. And that's what matters. But it's nice to have that nice, big, beefy uh, power supply on the bottom. And it also will allow me to overclock, as will this motherboard. Um, and the cooling unit should be okay for a little bit of overclocking. I'm not going to push it too far because the 3950X already needs water cooling just out of the box. Would not want to run this, not even on an Octua NHD15, unless, well, unless I wasn't doing much crazy stuff, but I'm going to be doing much crazy stuff. And for the peripherals for this streaming rig, um, I have been using nothing but our own Fennec products. We've got the Fennec mother membrane keyboard. So uh, at first I thought, you know, I'll get this because it's not too expensive, but I was really selective about picking uh, keys that felt really good with this keyboard and when I finally found them I was like yes this is the factory we need to use because their membrane keys feel nice and poppy almost like a Topra but not $200 you know what I mean it doesn't feel to me it feels like a $100 membrane keyboard so I started using that because it's dead quiet when I'm streaming and I've gotten so used to that I've actually switched over to it on my main rig and I've just been using the mother membrane keyboard so that's what we're going to keep using on the streaming rig and then of course I've got the standard issue mouse and I actually opened up the bottom because I tweak everything and remove weights. There's like 25 extra grams of weight on the inside that you can remove if you want it to be around 90 grams. Up to you if you like it heavier. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a heavier mouse, but for the streaming rig, I like to just chill and have a nice lightweight mouse. So standard issue and a mother membrane combo for the peripherals. And then for the monitors, you'll have to stay tuned because we're going to be doing a stream area tutorial and overview so I'll show you all my entire setup with the lights and the microphone, the desk, all the paraphernalia all around the room and everything like that. Again, uh, links in the top of the description so you can grab yourself a very inexpensive Windows 10 serial key and Microsoft Office and all that stuff. Put it on your new machine. So we'll see you guys in the comments. Also head over to epicpants.com to get your t-shirts and also that mother membrane keyboard and standard issue mouse or one of these Phoenix Swift mice if you fancy the 3360 sensor with a more ergonomic grip it's up to you get anyone you want but just but just don't not get one all right we'll see you guys in the comments